This is Joe Marcus Arezzi. Welcome to The Downside. I'm here with my friend who occasionally disappears from all form of communication like he did this oh, weekend. I knew you were going to bring You <laughs> have vanished. You vanished. And I... On a holiday? I took a more, holiday. More than that. Not, the holiday is for friendship. I took a holiday. It was Nicole's birthday and a holiday. Sure, sure. How, how present did you need me to be on? All, all on? I know, all I know is I sent you uh, something from uh, <laughs> Felicia Madison. You didn't respond. <laughs> uh, then I said, then I said, <laughs> you didn't respond at all. Really, and It was a really hey, good let one. See, let me see. No, but you can look on your own fucking time. Then I said, now this is the one that hurts. Wow. I said, what did you do for Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. And no. then many days later, you sent me someone else saying something crazy about Israel and Palestine. No, I didn't. I sent you a different thing. That was about aliens. Oh, oh it was just a Palestinian flag. Which side are they on? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, so you sent me something about aliens. I said, ha, 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 even though I was hurt inside because I was just being nice. Okay, John Marco. And then I called and you said, hey, sorry, I missed the call. What's up? Okay, yeah, and you didn't answer. Admit that you fluctuate, though. Admit that you sometimes w talk and talk and talk, I've... and it's like you vanish. Okay, Wednesday, I had two shows, and then I did. I went home. Let me get out the fucking violin. And then Thursday, I had the one day off, and I didn't really do much at all, and then I went to a friend's house that night. Did you want to hear that? I went to a friend's house that night. Cool. For Thanksgiving, what I did you know. do, John Marco? You I didn't know. I thought you were mad. I didn't. I didn't. Why would I be mad at you? JP and I texted more in the last couple of days <laughs> than you and I did. We've known each other for years. I sent you an alien thing. I thought, like, <laughs> listen, what we're really talking about here is you texted me on Friday, right? Uh huh. And then on Sunday, I texted you an alien. Thursday, thing. I texted you Thanksgiving. Okay, that is just a holiday, so it doesn't count. So basically, you text me Friday. And I text you Sunday, an alien thing that I thought you would enjoy because uh -huh. we talk about aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and now we're here. And I, I knew I was going to see you Monday. Men, men think that you send a picture of someone else saying something, and that counts as communication. Okay. Ugh. May I speak? Yes. Please, JP. I've no. I've been buddies with John Marco for a few years now, like comedy friends. And this is a this is really interesting to see, like up close, what it's like to be good friends and close with John Marco. This is <laughs> fascinating. It's it fluctuates between it's abusive because <laughs> it feels a little like a wife where I'm like, oh, oh yes, yes, let me let me get to you know, like I'm like trying to respond right away. What to a keep load. You Everything's happy. cool. What a, to keep you we, happy. Everything's and then, fine. And then if I if I if I let my guard down. And I would like just like I don't do everything to what he wants. He he flies into a rage. If and I, how does that make you feel? And I can tell John that Marco. you were mad when I said oh, sorry I missed your call. What's up? And you didn't respond. I was like, oh great, he's mad at me because I didn't text him back. You haven't told me that I, I sparkle I all weekend. I didn't walk away from my mashed potatoes to call him in a bathroom to be <laughs> like, oh, if, if the holiday's going great, dear. Like if I ever. <laughs> Left Russell on red for more than an hour. <laughs> I would have 10 missed calls. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you just never have to experience the pain of having you as a friend. <laughs> oh God damn, dude. Uh, Theater kids just feel shit more deeply. Yeah, we do. <laughs> this is we wild. do. Uh, we're here. I, that, that deep. That deep voice <laughs> was was uh, Mr. J.P. McDade. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. J.P., who I want to give the flowers to because uh, the Netflix set has now come out by the time this is released. Uh, it, was a, it was a roast joke of yours that ultimately uh, uh, took me a long time to figure out how to say it myself about myself. How to turn the gun on yourself. So I did a, a roast battle with, with J.P., and it was like the finals – and I was like, uh, the prize was uh, you you could do five minutes at New York Comedy Club and they wouldn't spit in your face. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I got to get this. I need this so bad. And uh, uh, JP won. Uh, it was a good match, though. It was a good match, but it was tough. And uh, your, your joke that really, really uh, cinched it was you said, I look like before I tell a joke, I whisper to myself, a five, six, seven, eight. Oh wow! You came up with that joke. I'm the author of that little poem. Wow. And oh, thank and you. Uh, Aaron Berg, <laughs> uh, who was judging, said, he said, Jamarco, you would have won if before your next joke you had went a five, six, seven, eight, 
And I said, I said that was, I, I, I hold that as like a, a comedy lesson. So many, many years, figured out how to say it on the stage. First, I tried to say it like about myself. I said, I know I look like I, before I tell a joke, I whisper. I, by the way, I don't know if I should be saying any of this. Some people like to believe that, you know, uh, uh, I've never had any help in my entire life. <laughs> had a lot of help. But then, then I tried saying, I look like before I say a joke, I whisper myself, five, six, seven, eight. Didn't really work. Then I said I did the full meta. I had a comedian once told me I look like, and that kind of worked. You're like, we're going to throw in a dance number, a couple of kicks, a couple of turns. Oh, workshop. Oh, I, I did. <laughs> I did. A plie. I did. I look like before I tell a joke, I whisper myself, a five, six, spin, eight, or a five, six. I did everything. <laughs> I've tried everything. Yes. And then finally I connected it to another joke I have about a drag queen telling me to take it down a notch. Uh, before she brought me on stage, she said, this next comedian looks like, before he tells a joke, he whispers a five, six, seven, eight, and it worked. Damn. So I had to recreate the roast uh, uh, atmosphere with a meta. I made you a drag queen. You had to be like, imagine, oh, you made me a drag queen? You made me a more interesting performer? Thank you so much. <laughs> a much more successful <laughs> I love drag trying queen to, comedian. I like trying to explain the roast battle atmosphere to an audience. Just be like, just pretend it was a niche little form of comedy that was a little bit popular six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, do they do roast still? They still do. Well, I they saw it meaning they, me because because <laughs> obviously roasts hit a thing where Comedy Central was having them, and it was like a thing. And now Comedy Central doesn't do them anymore, do they? I don't uh, think Comedy Central does much of anything anymore. But well, so, did you not see Justin Post recently? No, there's something coming back with roast that he is gonna. Really? Be the host of fucking let's go. Never mind. I take back all the terrible things I've said about Comedy Central in the last two or three years. <laughs> I, uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, by the way, everyone, this is the downside uh, place where we get negative. Um, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. Roast battle for my money. I mean, you you did you did one with Yamanika, who I wouldn't go against Yamanika. Oh, God. I'd be, ter- I'd be fucking terrified. Was <laughs> maybe the most nerve wracking moment of my life. Yes. Did you win? I, uh, no, no. But it Officially. was like, well, here's, well, here's. Let me just say, yeah. I, I, I would have to review that match <laughs> to assess for myself. But I think the biggest problem, in my opinion, with what happened when they made roast battles uh, on TV is they were fully scripted in a way that you took away. It would be like if you watched a basketball game. But they had already decided who won the game in like a WWE kind of way. Yes, allegedly. Oh. So like, so the, like, no one really like whiffed. People rarely like whiffed and silence. The comebacks were always so clean and so well executed that it, it lacked the feel of oh my god they just came up with something in the moment it was like you know how you know the the fight choreography in the Matrix is a little bit like mechanical. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Or and then they immediately organic. started getting celebrities, and and it just it, it. I always thought there would be something. I think I believe that like roast could be in theory this big thing with especially with not, not that it's necessarily fan base you want high school boys. I just feel like high, I feel like my brother was in high school at, at the time that I was doing roast, and I was like he would fucking love this shit. Yeah, shout out to my dudes, the high school. Shout out to the, all the Jadens out there. They're my guys, <laughs> but seriously, like roast, like roasts proper before battling, they did launch some people. Like Jesselnik basically got launched off of that roast. Yeah, the one that he was on with Schumer. Like no one really. I mean, he had a following a little bit, but then like, you you know, it was probably touring huge after that. I think. Sure. Uh, no, that's what he said. He, his first roast, I believe. I'm a big Jesselnik fan. It's embarrassing. <laughs> was uh, was Trump? Really? I think so yeah, it was Trump. And then I think after that, what year was Trump? Like 2000. I mean, this oh seven. I want to say oh, my oh eight, God, wow. something like that. You say like you say before, as in like it was before he was president. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like I couldn't remember if it was. Like, it had to have been before like the birther stuff. I figured. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. like before I think so. 2012. Before he was like Just before he was racist. <laughs> he was when he's a Democrat still. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then he did. Uh, then he did Charlie Sheen. Yep. And then Roseanne. I think he only did three. I don't know if there was a fourth. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Which was the one he did with Patrice there? Was that? That was the one where Patrice was like, I think this is going to be my last show. And then he died a few months later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God. That was Charlie Sheen. Yeah, that's how badly Justin Cross looked at him. <laughs> he lost a foot show. after that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so JP, JP is known. 
uh, amongst many other things, a, a, a phenomenal roaster. Known by dozens. Um, is the roast scene dead? No, it's actually very much alive. It's wild. It's just more scattered. It's in more places, but it's thriving like more than they have like a whole league that's like global. It's big in Austin. It's big in LA. It's kind of still big in New York, but they're in like London and Tokyo. And there's all these other leagues like around the world that are like competing for, I think Pat Barker is like organizing it. He's an LA guy, really funny dude. Uh, But yeah, it's like, I think it's in terms of like mainstream attention. No, definitely not. Like I remember when I, when I did JFL, at Montreal, it was like uh, that was the thing that was going on that week. Really? That was 2016. Like everyone wanted to get into roast battle. Wow. Like, oh, John Mayer's going to be there. It was the year you did JFL. I did, I did JFL, but I didn't do roast battle. I helped a couple people with their jokes. Broussard did it last yes. minute. He had done it the year before, and he, Matthew Broussard episode he one guest of yes. the downside. Ha 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 ha! Yes, <laughs> he. Um, I think he won or he lost to Jimmy Carr in the finals. He lost to Jimmy Carr in the finals. Yeah. Uh, to do i'd be so scared i think i could go back but i worked so hard i went to mike's for nothing ran for nothing we worked so hard on all these jokes well that's the thing if, if, if you, the moment you lose i'm sure there's some kind of term for this but like the, mo- the moment the reward or the prestige disappears people stop working as hard and then immediately the product goes south my favorite <laughs> is you for a while you would like run the jokes by me yeah 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 and <clears throat> you'd be like spouting them off, and I didn't know the person. You try to give me a few things at the top to tell me about them, but then you do a joke, and then you'd be like, "His sister's in a wheelchair." Like you have to like, be, like <laughs> the little. Otherwise, bit of I wouldn't get the like joke at all, and I'm like, "What?" And then you'd have to like <laughs> fill it in like as you went after you'd give me the punchline. Well, those those interviews, you you'd sit down and you'd be like, "Did your have your are your parents still alive? How yeah. did they die?" What do you meet me at this Panera Bread and let's talk about how yeah. time you got molested? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. And and it always be people had their own unique things about like there was one uh, woman I knew who I I roasted and you were allowed to talk about her dead father. She said, "Please don't talk about how old <laughs> yeah, he oh, was." Yeah. Be, like he had her when he was old, so I could joke about him being dead, but I couldn't make jokes about your dad was old. Like yeah. that was that was her sticking point. Yeah. Anyway, she had a totally normal dad, but he died after he broke his hip, and uh, it kind of <laughs> went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, uh, dementia I, pretty bad. <laughs> I never, I never took anything off the table. I now, I would, I would like not want Tova to be the object of roast. Innocent bystanders. I don't like it. I don't like when people when there's collateral damage. Yeah, from they people didn't in those agree battles. to sign up for it. Yeah. I try to avoid it. You try, he says. Yeah. Try, but then for <laughs> the final joke, he'll if it's let it too slide. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you. I wanted to to grab it uh, because because I worked really hard for for our match, and and <laughs> one one of the things with JP that everyone has taken a stab at, maybe you remember all of them, is that JP. Uh, uh, where did you grow up? Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. and if you're a roast battler, you you. You start frothing that's, at the that's mouth. That's top of mind if you're a roast battle. I'll, I'll give the podcast audience a minute to recollect where they know that name yeah. from. It's been 11 years. It's probably a lot of jokes now. like, you know. He like, couldn't kill in a room full of... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what one were you going to come up with? No, something like, you know, like he's worse than whatever happened. In, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like a lot of like that kind of thing, you know? Uh, that was where... I, I, I wouldn't say I... I think, if I recall, I wouldn't draw a line at mentioning it. But all I said, I asked people, is like, make the joke about me, please, because I have to like go back there and like see people. Yeah, you know, I'd like to that. Well, that's what that I to tried to do, horrible. JP, and I have a note here. It's <laughs> in my grand document saying this one did not work, <laughs> and it uh, it says JP grew up in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, but he told me not to talk about the Sandy Hook shooting because it makes him too hard. Okay. Oh, Marco. Oh, Marco. It didn't work. It didn't work. And you know what? Looking back at these jokes now, I do think I'm like, oh, I've comedically matured because I think I can see now more clearly what jokes were dark that w- w- the audience is going to go, oh. Now it arouses him. You'd use a bigger word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just an Oppenheimer yeah. sequence of John Marco being like, I'm going to combine a school shooting <laughs> with pedophilia <laughs> in a fusion reaction the world has never seen. Um, and it bombed. 
<laughs> it bombed. The, the one I, so I always struggled with roast battles. What do you think people said about me? What do you think their main target was? You're gay. Yes. You're, and and yeah. I remember once. Annoying. Okay. That's enough. That's mine. That's my category. <laughs> I did a roast with Anthony Passaretti way back in the day, and he said um, – the two that like, and this was early, so I was also felt a lot of feelings. I was a new comic, mm-hmm. and the two things he said that really are my feelings. He said that I got a job on CBS's Blue Bloods because they needed someone to make Donnie Wahlberg look like a good actor. Oh, okay. and that hurt because yeah. I think <laughs> that could be true. Yeah, and then something about I I had in my Facebook bio that I was a panpsychist. He said that's when is a joke where is a religion where you're the only one who believes in yourself. And that hurt. <laughs> and then something where I was annoying. And I, I felt I felt the t- a tear. Yeah. And I was like, if I cry, oh my I might have never – I might have had to leave stand-up. Wait, have you ever <laughs> been really hurt? Like yes. your feelings been hurt by a, I'm by a like, roast? I'm like punch drunk at this point. I, and also I'm more nervous on stage during a roast battle than I am during regular stand-up. Yeah. So like I'm just thinking about the next thing that I'm going to say. So I'm just over here like – Okay, they're going to call me some kind of sex predator, Winklevoss, uh, the tie in a school shooting thing, whatever. And I'm not like let, really letting it in. I'm just kind of like, get the next joke right. Come on. Yeah. I'm just trying to play it and act natural. I, I don't think I've ever really had my feelings hurt. Who's the scariest person you've ever gone against? Scariest? Like, like in the way that they are really good and you like made you nervous. I think Yamanique is an awesome example because, yeah. A, that was the first time I was doing anything on television. They paired me up with her like a week and a half before, and it's like, okay. White boy, <laughs> you're gonna yeah, go yeah, up, yeah, make yeah, your yeah, television yeah, yeah, debut, yeah. tell insulting jokes about this woman of color. Who yeah, I to never be plus in size. my roast battles. I never. I I went against uh, uh, Pedro. Yeah, and but other I than that, too. everyone I roasted was was white. <laughs> yeah, and be, and I don't think I would really know or feel comfortable. It, it would have to be a brilliant joke if it involved race. Yeah. Because I just feel <laughs> yeah. like if it was going to be as as mean as I want my roast joke to be, I just see it out of context yeah. in my mind. So I was like panicking. And then on top of all that, she's a fucking killer. She so is. I was like, and she's a killer. Going like she to... could do the jokes and she could also like in the moment just be like, look at you. And like in a yes. way she said it, people would be like, ah. And also I've seen her do stand up many times. She can ride a laugh. In a way that if she got like if she gained an inch, she was going to take a mile. Like if yeah. she got a laugh, she was going to be like, Bleh! just blow it out for yeah. a full minute of me just suffering. How did it go? It went it went amazingly well. I couldn't like even though I didn't get the result, it like I couldn't have asked for more. It was just that's good, unbelievable experience. It was so cool. The the one joke that I had here that I was still proud because p- people call me gay, and I I never <laughs> figured out how to fully uh, ride it because in one way. I thought like, oh, I'll be like, yeah, I'm gay. I'm the gayest. Like, I'll like, I'll be even gay. Which way do you go? Do you shoot the moon, or yeah. do you counter with like, I'm the, I fucked your girlfriend, or whatever? Like, well, I tried, like I tried both. I said, I fucked your dad. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was so gay, I fucked your dad. And yeah. and the the one thing that worked with with you is I said, uh, JP is six seven. I'm six four. We're like the twin towers because this is probably going to end with us going down on each other. <laughs> and it was like there was some if if I could make you gay with me, <laughs> gay by association. Yeah. That was that was the only move I ever found. You that think worked. you would spiral me into an Irish Catholic panic where I'm like, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm I'm, I'm not. You're gay. Yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. flip it on yeah. me. You shared your darkest, meanest joke about me. I feel like I should get blood on my hands too. Please. Yes. <laughs> because like the topics of what. Common topics about John Marco being annoying, mm-hmm. being a theater kid. I don't know if this one hit. This was in round three. I remember. I said John Marco gets his personality from his Jewish ancestors. Dicey in this climate. Uh, they were never brought to the camps because the Nazis thought that would be too cruel to the other Jews. <laughs> I. That's good. It was a different time. Yeah. It was a different time. <laughs> yeah. I finally on stage because now when if I say I'm Jewish, I feel the audience go, "Well, yeah," <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, fine, we'll assess that, and then we'll uh, roast Russell." No, I roast don't want Russell. to. <laughs> I don't like roasts. You know, I don't like roasts. <laughs> I've I've thought about it where it's like it they're really very stressful a- to me. I can't even watch the Comedy Central ones in the like thing of my own home. I think, yeah, like I I can appreciate them when I see them. I can be like, wow, that's good, but it's really stressful to me. 
what do you feel about I feel like uh, the other thing about roast battles is I feel like thank uh, you Andy Richter with a voice coach <laughs> 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 Jeff Ross like became like his philosophy about roast were became the philosophy of roast yeah so what do you think of the phrase you can tell already how I feel about it. You only roast the ones you love. Bullshit. Bullshit. Of course. <laughs> what the fuck? That was like that was that was part of the thing. And at some point, you predominantly make fun of people you don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's the impetus of all of it. Yeah, but it, th- I think there's some truth where, like, if there's someone that you really respect, there there is a, like a, a notion of you're respecting someone in some way by paying attention to them enough to write a careful roast joke about them. I think it does take a level of respect. I say doing a roast battle is like doing a history project on someone who doesn't matter. Yes. But that's the thing with comedy roasts is there's a degree of like how hard are you how hard are you really going to go? Yeah. The the one time that I was offended <laughs> in a way that like it still sticks with me is uh, uh I'll fucking say it. I I I battled a uh and it was it was over COVID. I did it from my bath. I thought it would be cute. It was just it was the most embarrassing thing. And I'm in my bath, getting cold. But a lot of his jokes were about me being a hack, and for me, that felt like you went out of your way to insult. I don't know. You could say I'm a little bitch about it, but like that was the it just the fact that he kept hitting on it. It just felt. Very personal. That is rather you. I see what you mean. Yeah. It just and it felt like we're doing the thing right now. We are agreeing to play a game right now. Yeah. And that's what you're gonna go after. Yeah, and that that would be something in in me that would like want to like trigger a sincere response, something embarrassing. Like, well, I was about to be like, you opened for me out of college and (laughs) bombed, and I didn't because I felt like that was. See, that's where it shifts. Paige, we're gonna have to bleep out that name. Son of a bitch. (laughs) It was Michael Richards, but it was. <laughs> it was they, I've seen this many times from like battling and judging, where it goes from like performance to dispute. Where in it's supposed to be a duet. It's supposed to be a two-person performance where you're both getting laughs. You want the other person to get laughs too, and you establish a rhythm where it becomes like this weirdly personal thing, and people are like clapping back at each other. Then it gets awkward. Nobody likes it. You're it like, well, you're a rapist, and it's like not <laughs> at all. It's just like true. Nobody and, knows that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, I guess I can't roast <laughs> anymore. Uh, <laughs> gonna have to take that name oh. out too. Might as well. <laughs> that was one. That was that was what I was. I was. I don't going, know what that is. I know, but it was. Nobody does. <laughs> it was like, oh god, we have to beep now. But I, I was gonna go. I he had opened for me at uh, uh, bananas, uh-huh. and I uh, I bananas coming back around. I was just like, oh, I'll just ask him again, and I couldn't find him online. And I asked them, I was like, hey, do you know where he went? And they were like, oh, you didn't hear? He was <laughs> accused multiple times of rape and oh, vanished God. the scene. And that's how so I knew. So he's available? <laughs> oh, God. That's how I knew that I was like out, like I had moved outside of the New York comedy scene because I had no idea yeah. about this this guy. But I don't know if you would even move out. I think it's like there's, it's not as cohesive as it used to be. There are like segments. The New York scene yeah, yeah. is like more segmented. There was than a time ever. someone raped someone. You heard about it. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about it at the yeah. water cooler. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> days are gone. I know. Jeez. That was before I. That was before I. We can keep that name out there, right? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the law is. I'll fight know. him. We know. <laughs> Wasn't he in the allegedly? Lawsuit? Allegedly, I don't we know. We gotta bleep all like. this out. <laughs> this is a, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible the segment! Worst, a terrible segment. Because right. <laughs> I do think there was a lawsuit involved, and I don't know if he won or not. Yeah, there was always a rumor that there was a rumor that that's why UCB. Why are we talking about? There was a rumor that that's why UCB, like <laughs> they lost a big chunk of change. Oh, really? Of the lawsuit. That was a rumor. That was yeah. a rumor. Oh God! Bleep the whole thing out. We Just can we can mention that. We don't. We can take out the name. I'm sure there was more than one rapist who worked at. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, uh, did you have another one that you wanted to? No, but I was just in case, just in case we we needed them up. I uh, it's nice I, to get something out of them because we were just doing roast battles for like no content. They were like there might have been a video, but we weren't even getting clips out of them. We were just doing the yeah. Like, if yeah. you put the monetary value on the on the writing work that we did for all those, like if we had any self esteem, well, we don't, we don't, and 
once in a while, I got one joke, and I promise people listening who hate stand-up comedy for whatever reason, <laughs> we will move on in a sec. I I did get one joke from uh, 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 Pontillo, James Pontillo, that I used in my act. That was my joke for him. Uh-huh. That became, it was about his dead mother. It became about my almost dead father, <laughs> um, which was uh, for him. I said, uh, you know, his mom passed away, but but she'll still be at all his shows, just like she uh, she was when she was alive in spirit. Something like that, mm. and uh, that that it worked for me when I did to him. People were like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I I said awful thing. You're as stiff as your mom's body. It was oh my brutal god. the things <laughs> I said uh, about his recently. Marco. That's what Jesus. the roast was. I oh. uh, wasn't there. Wasn't there a famous roast? Comedy it was fight Vietnam, club? basically. <laughs> it was. <laughs> there was like a comedy fight club where I think someone said the n word, and it was like the one moment where everyone was like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that like that was the tipping point where they were like, "We're was not." Was that the one roast that you anymore. tried? Shut up! <laughs> Would you ever, for your birthday, want to have like loved no. ones roast you? Absolutely not. No. Would you ever want to roast me? Like no. Like get some big laughs and say some things you've always wanted to say. No, uh, no, I don't want to do that to you. You'd be like a roast character. Those if are I ever have mm. like a roast thing, I, I'll, I'll I'll throw them in to the podcast. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. As we go. I can't decide if being the honoree at a roast would be fun or terrible. Probably a mix of both. But like, you get to go last, you get the last word, you probably yeah. kill. But then you're sit- you have to just kind of sit there and awkwardly. Ah. Yeah. Like, well, did what? anyone ever get mad in those Comedy Central ones? There was ones? a famous oh, yeah. Comedy Central one. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. And where he was getting roasted. He was like, he no, was getting yeah. roasted. Guy. And apparently, no one. None of his friends wanted to do it. So they were people, they were up and coming comedians who wanted to kill and yeah. make an impression who didn't really like him. It was He's Mark Maron. Well liked. Yeah. Mark Maron, Steve Colbert, Todd, I don't know. Some other, but like, but they were just mean and it was yeah. uncomfortable yeah. and they aired it once. And maybe, maybe Geraldo, like an early Geraldo. Yeah. Like, oh. And they just said, no one likes you. No one. And the audience would applaud. <laughs> This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Can you imagine Colbert doing a roast now? Like, that's crazy that he did a roast. Yeah. I just feel like it's like, because remember he did that. You remind me of Mr. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> He did that one great Bush um, thing too. The remember he like it's like this is a guy who's not up to date with his vaccine boosters. <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. I'm it sure is. he could be no so offense. mean. Big fan, but of course, big yeah. fan. Yeah. Go back to it. <laughs> just, just, just different, different times. I uh, this is coming out December nineteenth, but we are recording this a little bit early to accommodate Russell's busy, busy schedule. Um, I love you, buddy. I love you too. I uh, uh, I did have one more thing because we record. I recorded my episode with Joe Firestone earlier today. I was talking about Thanksgiving, and there's one thing I forgot to bring up: is that like I, I went to a family function for Thanksgiving, and I I had a I had a family member. Who, there's some sports game on football, <laughs> and they they were wearing like neon green. There was some type of sports pageant some happening. Sort and of <laughs> costumed <laughs> costume sporting event. I assume football. It was very choreographed. The choreo was <laughs> tight. I will say that. And uh, uh, one of the 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 team. I don't know if it was the Sharks or the Jets. But one <laughs> of them was one of them was wearing uh, uh, like neon green. Their their outfit looks a little weird. And I was like, is there is there has their uh, costume uniform? always been? Has their uniform <laughs> has their uniform always been this green? And and my this family member was like, oh. He's making a bit. Uh, He's making yeah. a bit. All right, it's cooking. I sealed the wheel, and I was like, "Oh my!" God. I, I want to be like, I want to be like, no, Ava, I'm not making a bit. If I was making a bit, it would be about the racist thing you said to me on the car ride over here. It would have nothing <laughs> yeah. to do with, yeah. with this. But like, it was one where it was. I could not say anything, other than a basic question again and again. I go, not not just you should make this a bit, but they went, oh. <laughs> Here he goes. It's such a it's such a well meaning thing that family members say, but they don't know how annoying it is. And it's every single gathering with oh, you're gonna get a lot of material. You're gonna get a lot of material. Yeah. And and the assumption of how interesting people think they are. Yeah. The like the gall (laughs) to just be like, you think 
I agree with you, and then I go, I thought I was so interesting that I decided to make a profession out of talking about it. So yeah. I'm, I have the same <laughs> delusion. That's true. That's true. But yeah. – but, but I work to f- to, f- yeah. to ring. But like, I think the solution would. But be- I don't go to like I don't go like I think of all the times I'm so boring. Like I w- I would never like just be around you know like I, like do you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, there's nothing. I, uh, you no, know, if something w- worthwhile happened of talking on stage, it would be so traumatic in the moment that no one would be like, oh, you should make a bit out of this. Yeah. Like if someone had a heart attack at the table, that's the thing I'd make a bit out of. Yeah. But you wouldn't bring it up then. I think the solution would be I invite them to a show, and I take their suggestion. And I go, ah, oh, it was that Thanksgiving dinner the other day. So many candied yams. More than we could possibly eat. <laughs> Who made so many candied yams? Who's candying the yams? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't candy. There's uh, a football <laughs> team. The uniforms were really green. green. What are these greens they're doing these days? I mean, that should have been the, the way you respond in the moment is like just corner that guy and be like, hey, can you help me with this green bit that I'm working yeah. on? Just like pull out your notebook. Like, <laughs> really make him work. Green. Uh, green with envy. Green. Uh, like If you're new at something, you're green. Green light. Uh, the green lantern. And then Fuck, he'd go like, else? ugh, I don't like talking about comedy, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you're in this now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it reminds me of that. It's a Robert... Patterson, uh, what's his name? Patterson. Pattinson. Pattinson. He told a story. I don't know if it's apocryphal, but like he had a stalker, and so he just took them out to lunch and complained about like his agent and whatever. And the stalker was like, "Oh, I don't like you anymore." Yeah. Like doing that with comedy, be like, "Oh my God, you're right." Exposure to so therapy. Where would this go? What would be the twist? Can we think of a tag? And then they turn to my girlfriend and go like, "Please, no more." Wait, who did you do Thanksgiving with? I was trying to keep it vague for all the. <laughs> Things I just oh, talked well, shit you about. You don't have to say that. No, no, it was it was many. It was my mom's side. It was it was oh, the okay. Jew Jew side and Great Neck. Got it. And, I, uh, I think the answer is now that there's a solution. Like just be like, oh, you're gonna get a lot of material. It's like you just launch into a bitter tirade. Like it's not about the material anymore. It's about satisfying the algorithm, mm-hmm. getting followers. These fucking clubs they book off of who has Instagram and TikTok fucking followers, not who's fucking good, yeah. and just like gripe as much as possible. Yeah, I like how you use that story as an excuse to express your own feelings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you do crowd work with the table. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should. I yeah. should. I, uh, you ever see a black dick? <laughs> 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 what about this Asian guy over here? I bet he's got a different dick. Oh, you thought there was an Asian guy at my Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> you bring an Asian guy just to <laughs> aid the crowd. <laughs> Who brought this Asian guy? <laughs> that was me. Uh, What's up, pal? You circumcised? <laughs> I, I, um, I, co- co- family members want like I get that they want to like connect on that level and like yeah. they want to express an interest in this thing that I do. But honestly, if we were in a conversation, like I'd love to just hear about your recent promotion at IBM. I want to hear about the new car you just leased. Please tell me about all that shit. I'd like, I'd be so much more interested if we just talked about your normal stuff. I think it's, it's just always about like specifics. Like if they, it's just, uh, you ask general questions. How's touring as opposed to like, how is San Diego? Yeah. How like it's all those conversations just become, let me tell you the Sheridan. Like, oh, another Marion. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you live you live the Bonvoy lifestyle. Oh, yes. yeah. Well, now yes. it's everything. I, I think I've made it and this has got to stop where I hate how it's like Marriott's Ace Hotels, Marriott's AC Hotels, Marriott's. Too like, many brands. You, too many brands. Too many verticals. Yeah, they're all. I saw a management company today. It was five names. And I was just <laughs> like, stop it. Yeah. You guys. and it, it, I know it's guys. You guys stop it. Just pick a pick. <laughs> yeah. Imagination Studios. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, JP, we 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 work together uh, a bunch. Not too many bad gigs. We did that one gig in Connecticut. Uh, when I went couple to Connecticut. We've we've run a muck in Connecticut. Yeah, that's why Mohegan Sun. I, that's anywhere. where Mohegan? I met JP. Yes, Russell. No, well, we did Mohegan Sun for sure. But JP and I did that one. You you probably saw a picture. It was it was outdoors. It was in front of a big American oh. flag. Oh, you were with me. Yes, you were with me when I got the speeding ticket driving to that gig. Right. In a car that was not mine. Right. Wanted man. You bravely riffed on that experience at the outdoor show with eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, I riffed flag. on the price of McDonald's drive-through. Surprising me. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the audience was like they were well aware. They were <laughs> these were these were the a crowd of McDonald's lovers. <laughs> I was like, How much do you think this, this, and this cost? The later was like seventeen twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't surprised at all. Like, What's your point, idiot? <laughs> Go back to New York. <laughs> that was the show the Trump where, rally. Yeah, it was. It was very Yeah. Very conservative. I'm trying. That's to think. the weird thing about Connecticut is that um, it's a real mix. Oh yeah. Even I was telling we talked about it before, but at Mohegan Sun, you it would be really interesting because it would be like watching some jokes, and there'd be some like kind of liberal type people that you could do them for, and then and, and but then some of your stuff. They were like, "Whoa, this kid had a dick in his mouth," you know, like or like or like like, <laughs> like 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 they 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 got like really conservative, and it's like interesting because we like, sanctify in the name of Jesus. Yeah. To be clear, in the bit, the my dick is in his Your mouth. Your dick's in his mouth. But, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> Connecticut. What I've realized having grown up there is it's the worst parts of both political parties. You yeah. have every kind of evil wow. Republican, every kind of evil. Like all the cities are run by the most corrupt Democrats you could possibly imagine, yeah. and then all the rural areas are like either rednecks or like George H. W. Bush type skull and bones Republicans. Mm. And they're just in different parts of Connecticut because yes. like where we were for that show, it was just conservative. The boondocks. It was guys it's where the men look like they s- looked at Trump as also a fashion. They're orange. <laughs> yeah. They're orange. Yeah. They yeah. became orange. <laughs> and they and they like they're they're like uh, heavy in the same way and orange and buttoned down and and it's a lot of guys who own pool companies and they have like Punisher <laughs> decals on their pickup trucks. They have like cons- they have Confederate flags, things oh, like that. Yeah. And like the northernmost part of Connecticut. And there, there I remember the one guy at that show. He shook my hand. He said. I like it because you made fun of the other side, too. And I was like, okay. Okay, that was my past. Do you remember what else he said? He was what like, he you know where you are. Okay? Like, he was sh- he's shaking your hand for a weirdly long time. He's like, you know where you are? Like, in a very threatening tone. Oh, my God. <laughs> we like, and that was also oh, the show where a woman came up and just took one of my uh, my merch towels and just started dabbing herself yeah. and walked away with it. And I was like, oh, uh, no, you have to you have to pay for that. Oh. And it was very uncomfortable. She came back like, oh. Even in the redneck okay. parts of Connecticut, there's that entitlement. <laughs> like, yes, this is mine. I'm a wine mom, and I'm taking your towel. Because Connecticut is where I performed most, uh, like, when COVID, when outdoor shows first started. Right. That's our Florida. Was that fair to say? Yeah, there are many Floridas of this region, I think. But Connecticut has a fair claim to, to yeah. many of the Florida-type regions. I just know that first outdoor show I did with... Kenny Ortega, rest in peace. Uh, he didn't get covered from that show. But when I was walking back, I put on the mask, walking back to the car, and someone from afar was like, mass hole. <laughs> like a mask, mask asshole. That was the term. And I, yeah. I was like, that's great. It also has a different definition in the region. You can't co opt that. It's for bad drivers from Massachusetts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mask can't take hole. That. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I've, oh, that's interesting. Uh, remember, I got yelled at by the, in, the, in New Hampshire. When we were on that, oh, New Hampshire's together. different. They were they were yelling at me because they saw my New York license plates. Yeah, and they were <laughs> like they were not happy that I was there. What they say COVID. to you? They said, "Were you? Were you they're like you? You go you, you, like also everyone's on Southern. Yeah. in in these places, but they're like they're like, oh, New York, you going back there soon? And you're and I was like, no, and then but I was. But How about I was right like, now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like they were really they were really upset about it, and I couldn't tell. Well, I mean, I had a mask. I had like you know, it was like a height of COVID. But uh, it's it's so it's so you look like you didn't have a pill addiction. And we were like, (laughs) this guy (laughs) must be from around not around these parts. I had almost the exact same thing happen to me. I was in rural Virginia with some college friends and my college friend had on his car. He had Jersey plates. And one guy, I swear to God, he was we're coming out of some store wherever he's like, y'all from New Jersey. And we're like, "Uh, yes, sir. And he's like, starts my stairs, smarts, my dog, back there now. Like we didn't get one word. Yeah, <laughs> just you a, could tell it was a slur. In a there riff somewhere. of syllables, some kind yeah. of cryptic but warning. It, no, but it, but <laughs> Did you? I guess I don't really understand Connecticut in in general because I feel like I know it's a tough nut to crack. So the the Hamptons is Connecticut? No, no it's Long well, Island. Long Island. Hamptons. Okay. I, the so, Gold Coast is is. Well, we know my friend Chris's dad has a boat there, so I know there's like some wealth in certain parts of Connecticut. All the smart rich people dock their boats in Rhode Island for tax reasons, but yes, there are many oh. boats in Connecticut. And 
and then it's other mixes of really southern. Well, how did the South people get there? No, well, it's the same as like upstate New York. I mean, like like where I'm from is basically the South. It's in different. In, it's different in Connecticut because like in Connecticut, the parts of that are like rural. The accent is like Midwestern. It's like Chicago. Like you got yeah, you got to move the truck for the guy to get in because he's got to bring the hose around, like that kind of guy. Uh-huh. And he's like you know landscaper type dudes who talk like Furda. Like they say, instead of Forda, they say Furda. Like guys like that. Yeah. Like they sound like Chicago cops for whatever. And it's not explained why they talk that way because it's between Massachusetts and New York. And there's some, like in the suburbs, there's mixes of those accents. Yeah. But then it's like an unexplained rural, you know, third way. Mm. These guys, like I delivered a pizza to a guy one time. He just had a gun. They had like a shotgun out on the porch just laying there. I used to deliver pizzas in, in Connecticut and it was uh, an interesting little wow. slice of life. So you just had a gun and, and you were, yeah, were you scared? Were you, how old were you? I was like 17, 16. Was, yeah? Yeah, it must have been 17 because I had my license, but it was yeah, it was one of my first jobs. But Connecticut Rednecks, I, I was trying to do this bit for a while where um, a Connecticut Redneck is like a guy who has two dirt bikes, but his kids share a bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot of those style guys. Yeah. BMX style rednecks. You know, Does that work in Connecticut? Heads. Uh, I haven't tried it in Connecticut. Maybe sometimes sometimes it local jokes, it's tough. It's just like, <clears throat> can it translate outside? But you make it local. You'd be like, Shelton. You know. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. People love the hyper-specific references. Yeah. Um, so you grew up in, in Newtown. Mm-hmm. Did you Did you enjoy it? Would you ever raise children there? Ab- honestly, absolutely. Yes. Well, I, I, w- I honestly couldn't think of a better place to grow up. So we moved there from Long Island when I was eight. Okay. And I kind of resented it at first. I didn't really like it. You know, I was away from all my friends, whatever. But it's like, it's a pretty idyllic suburb. And it's like, yeah. honestly, this is not a dark joke. Great schools. We have really good schools. And it was the, it's part of what made it like so terrible. But it was like such a, it was sure. A, it was shocking. It, it was, was just... known as an especially good place to raise kids. Yeah. Like a lot of youth sports, a lot of like investment in the arts, kids, you know, did theater and music and like everything was very kid centric. It was all like people who just wanted to get their kids to college. That's why you raise your kids there. And it was just a, it was a good place. Why did you move from Long Island originally? My dad's job moved from, he was working in the city and then like they opened a new branch in Stamford and uh, we just like kind of relocated with that. Did you, <clears throat> were you really sad at first? I feel like. I was. Yeah. I didn't understand how close it was geographically. I was like, I will never see these people again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An ocean now separates us. You never saw your friends from then, I'm sure. I saw them like once, a couple more times. And then. That's how it works. I I moved schools at the end of fifth grade, and you're like. Tough year. You, you, yeah, because then you're in middle school, and like, but I, uh, you, you do that thing where. Middle school, you start getting so busy with the homework. You see them, (laughs) you know, you try to see them, and then you just, you know. Oh, yeah. We're we're just going in different directions, pal. That's how I felt at the end of summer camp. I, when I had every summer camp I ended like it was w- weeping. Really, and I feel like it's because deep down we knew, no matter how many it's promises done. we made These to each other, five it's weeks done. have meant so much. But they did. Yeah. But they did because you spent the whole they day did. together. They did. I, if I was if I was uh, single still at this age, or if, if Tova dumped me out of the blue, you'd reach out to some. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I would go to like have your hand job skills improved. <laughs> Since you if were I needed, if I needed like some friends, if I was like, if I was like, oh, I need some friends. Russell's just booking too many Broadway shows. I would go <laughs> to a some kind of sleepaway. I think like adult you, sleepaway. You need camp. to share spaces beyond the regular bounds of friendship to become more bonded. Hundred percent. Like when we went to New Hampshire together, that is a leveling up of the friendship. Definitely. Like there's you when you get so drunk, you spend the night. That's a level up. Comedy festival friends. Comedy yeah. festival. Yeah. I COVID interrupted. I think when I would have done like every single yeah. festival, and and those are so crucial. Yeah, you know each other for like two days, and then you're like friends for life. Every comedy festival, and I would be weeping with all the comedians, and they'd be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" We got a weeper on our hands. We got a weeper. He weeps. He weeps at roasts. He's he like, "Yeah, he's like, I weeped at roasts." He weeps at the festivals. Um, Pagliacci over here. <laughs> So do you remember, since this is the downside, I do, I do think people yeah. would be curious about what what year was was the was the Labor Day parade? <laughs> it's every year now. What? Because I twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yeah, December fourteenth. Um, 
I remember where I was because I, I was literally doing extra work on the Wolf of Wall Street. Really? And uh, oh, it was man. it was such a it was an awful environment. It was awful because yeah. it was like with two hundred extras, uh, some some of whom were like some of whom were like would call Marty Marty. Oh and, no! Oh, no. And the least emotionally aware people no. <laughs> during an extremely emotionally heightened no. time. Oh, and, Marty. Oh, God. Marty. And Wolf Wall Street, it was one of those, I remember it maybe so mad because Backstage Magazine featured, there was an extra in Wolf of Wall Street that Ryan Gosling liked him, so just made him his, like, assistant. He got a couple lines. So yeah. then every extra believes for the next 50 oh. years. It's this poisonous story that got out there. <laughs> yes. And luckily, AI is about to replace all the extras. But uh, depending, we'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, it's going up to producers like, is there room for riffing in the script? <laughs> I, I listen. I love you, extras. I, I made some money, but I was also is that a what not you call them? Doesn't a background artist? I think we called ourselves extras. Okay. Pigs. I call you them you pigs. I call them screen <laughs> pigs. Winky, winky, little. <laughs> I call them couches that need food. I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was a non-union extra, so all the union extras would get to eat first. Yeah, and then we like it was just like you knew in every place you were the lowest. Yeah, on this totem pole, and we varsity had varsity goes first. <laughs> That's awesome. We had it was it was these big boardroom scenes, and it was like two hundred guys. They told us don't bring your phone, and I stupidly listened, and then I was there for eight hours doing fake work. Oh man, fake work. Oh, and you just you move around, you go on the phone. If if you ever watch the phone a movie, between your ear, crossing your have legs, you ever watch yeah. the movie, or can you ever see yourself in it? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. You were uh, a spiritual extra. Yes, and that's what's so. That's even more humiliating. I'm literally not even yeah. there. Yeah, but there was a moment where Leo said he learned a lot from me. Yeah, yeah. Where the guys were all fucking around. We're all men in between our twenties and fifties in the lowest point of our lives. Yeah. Just and we were putting people were putting sticky notes on each other's back. And basically someone called cut and they said one eighty to two, three eighty four all the way in the back. Said Marty said someone walked by with a sticky note that said, I have herpes. So guys, guys, come on. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you're trying to get adults to behave, but you're not giving them any respect or reason to. I think it would have played in that uh, Stratton Avon yeah, environment. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you know, I have these dialogues with Come Marty on, all Marty, the time. Marty, Marty. That's what iron sharpens iron, if you ask me. That's why it's good for us to disagree that's so like funny. that. Uh, you know, um, at Gutenberg recently, um, Martin Short came uh -huh. out, and I felt like. People being real loose with the Short Marty. A. Marty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're just be they talking about it. And then Marty came down. And you're like, shut up. No, no. Stop calling him that. That's not what you, like, that's, it's just a funny yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, when someone over, like, familiar, like, you know, it like, was it was me and Bert Einstein. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking <laughs> physics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> me and Dolph Hitler. Yeah. We go way back. <laughs> the stash. <Yeah. laughs> I said, lose it, pal. <laughs> and he you know he wouldn't listen. He was famously stubborn. But you're on this uh, on this set, and you have one very dark thing to talk about with all. Oh of these yeah, men. yeah. It was like to to share a collective tragedy with oh, God. a group of people you didn't want to be with in the first place. How did they? How did you find out? Did people just saw it on the phone or what? Uh, yeah, they just spread it. It, it was like it happened like a lot of tragedies unfolded where I think I'm always like I, I don't fully grasp. If because sh mass shootings had happened, so I didn't know right. like how uh, that this was a different degree and a different level and a different like, oh, this really is about to shake the world. Yeah, I remember when nine eleven happened. I was I was in eighth grade, maybe two thousand. No, no, no. I was in seventh grade. Thirteen, fourteen, maybe, and and I just like didn't understand. To the industry, I was uh, five years old. <laughs> I didn't know like the size of the catastrophe. I was yeah. Like, oh, something bad happened, and everything bad things bad happened in the world. But very quickly, you were like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. What was it like? Did you did you know that school particular? You I went, went there? there for three years. Jesus fuck. Yeah. Oh. Right. So we moved there the summer before um, second no third grade. Summer before third grade for me. So I went there for they used to have fifth grade there. I went for third, fourth, and fifth grade, and uh -huh. uh, like I can smell it. Like I, you know, I know like the what the floor tiles look like, and it's, it's like a, you know a visceral sense memories of what's going on there. But like, kind of like what you said, how you like immediately you don't grasp the scope of it. Like I got a text from my mom that morning, like shortly after 
the news broke. Like, they, my parents found out from SWAT trucks driving by oh my God. the house because the shooter lived on our street. <gasps> he was on, I, we knew them. I went to their house. And, like, it, that's how they found out. My mom texted me, like, shooting at Sandy Hook School. I was like, no. Just immediate denial. But it was like, you figure it's something like, okay, it's not one of the real ones. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some kid had a gun in his bag and it went off or something like yeah. that. And it was like, oh, shit. Within, in a matter of hours, it was like, what the fuck? We went through the time warp. Like, the town went from, in terms of media presence, it went from zero to Super Bowl. Yeah. In about yeah. twelve hours, it was like, "What the fuck is?" It was baffling. And you knew the the family, the yeah. Killer. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, they initially thought it was his older brother. I don't know what he's doing now. Jesus Christ! But like, I think they changed brought, his name. I would yeah, hope I, number one. Uh, yeah, but like, I think they put him in a squad car in New Jersey. Oof. And like, yeah, they they live down the street from us. Like, we went to the same bus stop, I think, for a little bit. And like, I remember going over to their house to watch Dragon Ball Z at some point. Nothing against the no. show. Because I like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's that's a good a, that's show. A wide net. It's a good. Think about think about how wide that net is. <laughs> that, that's why we're having such a problem in America. It was so popular. <laughs> There's not enough anime to bring us together. <laughs> <laughs> um, you went to his house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is I, the age Well, difference? I knew the older. I knew the you older knew the brother. Older brother. brother. The younger brother who the, who was the shooter. He was like very very young at that time. So we didn't we weren't like hanging out or anything. But yeah, he was like yeah, around yeah. the house. And it was like, did, uh, he, did he kill his mom? Does that? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He killed his mom first. First, yeah, and then and then went to the school. Um, was the dad not around? I, yeah, I don't think I never met the dad. I don't think the dad was in the picture. I think they were like uh, they were divorced. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z divorce. <laughs> Strike two. Ball Z divorce. But uh, yeah, I don't think he was really in the picture. I. Uh, do you remember like? Did you feel weird? Did you did you talk about it with someone? Like it's it's just strange when the tragedy is that close, but it's not direct. But it's like it's interesting because yeah, it was like thank God I didn't lose anybody. But it yeah. was it was so geographically close. I went home that day, and like I went through the house, and there were all these news trucks like lined up in front of they were right in front of our house because of where they had like cordoned off the street. Yeah. So like that was as close as they could get, and it was just so absurd. Um, Wait, what was your initial question? I lost what, my what, how you felt? Like, what? Yeah. you went home. Yeah, was it I, just see your family or just? Yeah, like- I was, I was fully panicking. I was like, because like, I, I was getting text messages. The news started to roll in. And like, as the scope of it became apparent, I was like, like all the blood drained out of like my fingers and toes. I couldn't do. I was at work in like the financial district, and I was like, I can't do anything. And my boss was like, Go home. And it was a Friday yeah. too, so eh, three day weekend. But I, uh, I was, I was that intrusive thought of like, yeah. Hey. I knew it was bad. I got like my favorite lunch, and I couldn't eat it. I was oh, like, yeah. what the fuck? And I was, I just got on the Metro North, and I uh, met my mom in Bridgeport, and she picked me up, and I went home. But it was like you uh, stared at the news all day, just. Well, we, yeah, it was literally surrounding us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the the TV was on, and like the person reporting would be outside. Yeah. And like we we drove through the center of town, and it's like there's Anderson Cooper. There's like Don Lemon or whatever who's like people whoever was actually there, but it was like people in the spotlight and like we all went to uh, the church, we went to St. Rose, that's like where the town congregated, and it was like thousands of people in there. Again, even more news trucks. It was like this massive, massive media circus and just like people crying. And no one knows what to say. No one knows what to do and just like hugging each other, and it was just deeply. Biz- I was struck by like not only how terrible it was but how absurd. I was like, this can happen? Sure. You know? Yeah. Sure. Like, yeah. And think how often that happens now, right? Like, it, there's so many places where people are like, oh, yeah, it, it can be my town, too. Was there any, Was there any like, when you see all these, this industry, this news industry just kind of uh, suddenly taking all this interest and asking all these questions, was there any, like, ugh, you vultures? Like, in 100%. A, you know, yeah. They talked to me. So here's what happened. So they were, like I said, the trucks were all in front of our house. We were like kind of in the epicenter. We were th- where our, our house was like down from the street. So they were people. They were just literally walking down our driveway, and they would walk up to the house, and we'd have to be like, "No, no, thanks." And then like the day after, I guess my parents just kind of had enough. They were like, "All right, we'll answer some questions." And then there's a uh, there, outside my front door. There's a huddle of the press, like a like after a, a football game or something, and the, like uh, probably twelve to fifteen reporters, like with microphones. And they were like, my parents were like, they, this, you know, you knew him. They want you to ask, answer some questions. I'm like 23, I guess, at the time. And I'm like, 
fuck it, let's get it over with. And like, I go out there. I remember there was one Fox News reporter who was th- like, they asked me a bunch of questions. I think it was live on TV. And like, um, this one Fox News reporter was like, uh, he, so, so he was autistic, right? And I was like, I don't know if I can say that. Like, that's not for me to say. But like, well, yeah, but you noticed, right? And like, she's drilling me just yeah. to get me to go with like a narrative. I was like, fuck you, lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just freaking out. And, um, yeah, the vault like they would not stop. I put a sign on the door eventually where I was like, "Do not knock, do not ring the bell." It was they just wouldn't stop. Oh, yeah, that's true. If someone says to me, "So were they autistic?" <laughs> yeah. They're like, "Oh, uh, oh, let me wing a diagnosis here yeah, on national yeah, television yeah. in the height of a tragedy." <laughs> like it was, it was truly absurd. I, I, you know, there's there's some comedians who flirt with uh, Alex Jones. Uh-huh. And listen, the world the world is complicated. And the older I get, the more I I question, for example, the Anderson Coopers and the Don Lemons of the world. And I go, are sure. they equally as vulturous and yes. spinning their own narratives? Sure. I mean, maybe not Alex Jones, but but I but, think they're pretty gross. Sure, but the world the world is is complex. But there's some things that I I can't help but I go like, no, this is bad. Yeah, and and then I always I'm like, well, are you still right about this? But Alex Jones, oh yeah, spreading the the conspiracy and the thought that these parents were faking it and these parents having to move because they were getting harassed. To me, that should be punishable by a thing I won't say. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and I don't know. It's just like was, any, that, was any, that just it was that just because. It was to come up against any sort of gun thing. Yeah. Was that just to be like th- this? This w- everyone would would agree that this was like the worst possible scenario we could imagine of like the youngest kinds of children being impacted by this. And so, uh, instead of dealing with that horror, you just spin a tale that's so farcical. Like- well, there's the NRA side of it, which they they all have their different angles. Uh, there was a great there was a great episode about I think it was the Columbine shooting. It was like it felt like the NRA was about to like lose, and then they figured out their na- their system for getting about this. But I also feel like I feel like some conspiracy theorists they when something so awful happens, yeah, it's it's akin to a religious belief, yeah, where they go surely this couldn't have happened. chaos can't exist in the world because if it does, that means. There's no just – there's nothing. Yeah, my I whole think. understanding of everything is blown apart. And I think I, – I never really got to the bottom of, like, why people do that. But I do think – okay, so in, if you look throughout history, there have been real conspiracies. There have yes. been things that were done that were, you know, where the original narrative that was accepted was not true. And yeah. there's enough of those, but then there's counter-programming against that where there's, like, okay, if you conflate – thought about stuff like that with wacky shit like flat earth or whatever then it all be kind of blends together and people don't so i kind of understand people's impulse to like to be like don't tell me not to ask questions and i i don't want to be the guy who's like don't ask questions except whatever the narrative is but i also and i also i like i don't want to like put down independent media either because i think like that's important too but i also like I mean, if you get to the point where you're like harassing victims' families, yes, yeah, yes, that's that's the you've degree lost of the thread. Yeah, you know, it was funny though. Uh, Tove and I we were at a bookstore, and it was like I was, I was like, oh, let's get a book about like uh, Palestine and Israel. That's uh, that's like a fully just the facts. And then yeah. the moment we got to the, we we're like, well, how the fuck do we do even know? tell yeah. that? And it, 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 like, <laughs> right? How do you know? That? We're looking yeah. at like you know just suddenly the facts Israel Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are probably uh, t- Israel. Just the facts Israel. by Netanyahu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'd be co-authored by one Israeli and one yeah. Palestinian. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. They're both the pit. The cover is both of them in a bed, like the odd couple. Like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it, but it, it was. It is a moment that I do think. I also experienced getting older, where I was just like, oh, I. I don't know how to trust. I understand how people lose it. I listen harassing yeah. people. That's a different. Um, that's an emotional like tick that you're yeah. stuck in your head. But I do, as I get older, go like it is. It is tough because 
you know, if you do look up enough big pharma stuff, I could see how you get to the point oh. where you go, I'm uncomfortable with <laughs> Every the government saying I have to get this thing. I get how you could get there. I could wrap my head around. Yes, that. yeah. And ultimately, my answer is I'm not willing to do. I, first of all, I don't have the intelligence to understand science well enough to get down into the depths of that, and so I just accept. I accept it, but but I don't know what the answer is. I the, the more you read about. Uh, uh, Iraq, you're like, oh, well, then should I guess I can't trust any mainstream media source. And then who do you trust? Where do you get anything? And then you, I don't know. Yeah. I feel I feel it now. I just feel it worse and worse as I get older. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it feels like sometimes you're like, there's stuff you hear, like Alex Jones stuff, you're like, no, that's crazy. But then there's other things where you're like, I can see how people started somewhere. JFK. And that, and that I, could, them, I still don't know. Them the, down grand, the granddaddy of them all. That's where, that's where the term conspiracy theory originates. People. Now, listen, the conspiracy theorists outside the JFK, the sixth floor book repository, mm -hmm. they were nuts. They were clearly nuts, and they were hawking their goods. I can recognize— Oh, the people who are, like, selling books there, you mean? Yeah. Selling yeah. books, and they, uh -huh. get, they got a picture of JFK's corpse, and they're just showing it around. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, but then I, I do know res people that I respect that go like something was up, and I'm like, what? What? I feel. Let like me tell you. With that one, something was up. You think so? Yep. I I I could be I could be swayed. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> really alien boy over here could be swayed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care enough about it. I Russell's think to guy. like really investigate, but I could be swayed. Uh, you know, there me. was a second shooter. I don't know about. Okay, so if you. <laughs> If you My look at other theory is that there's two shooters and they were unrelated. They both just ended up <laughs> at the same time on the, the same, same day. <laughs> and they were like, "You did what? I was I gonna was doing it." What? <laughs> well, I guess we then and then they fell in Louise their way. Yeah. They got in a car and they drove away with yeah. Jackie. <laughs> but they the if there's an interesting book called um, The Devil's Chessboard about the formation of the CIA, like it's rolled throughout like the mid century, like post World War II, how it became like in this incredibly powerful, f powerful force within our government or outside of our government, however you want to look at it. And there's some real interesting stuff about like CIA connections to this mafia personality or this uh, hit squad in the in Central America. And you look at these assassinations. Oh, that's my dad. dad, were we involved in the, <laughs> the Kennedy assassination? Hey, oh, but just. It was he in the company? You don't have to say on the record. I know, I know. <laughs> I, but, <laughs> but I don't know. But then sometimes you're like, no, we're lower. But it becomes so complicated. Yes. Every president you could tie to the mafia in some way. Yeah. Well, especially. But then, then, like, if you look at like CIA assassinations that took place in Central yeah. America, like the way they were drawn up, you get a guy in a limousine making a left on a street. Like, and it's it, there's a there's a lot of smoke. Is all I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff. There's the magic bullet. Doesn't quite add up, but this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm I want to leave open a little room for kookiness like this, Definitely. where like I don't want to be the guy who says don't ask questions. Like, yeah, have some explore some wacky thought. But if you if there's compelling evidence that says okay, one guy Lee Harvey Oswald was very mad and he shot the president three times and from a moving target from 500 feet away, then great, I'll accept that. Uh, you got to be in a position where you can be like, all right. When presented with evidence, you can be rational and be like, uh, that makes sense. I just think it's this far away from going, though. It was staged, and we need to harass Jackie Kennedy until we get to the bottom of the yeah, But she would yeah. know. <laughs> sure. You know. Or would she? Yeah. Listen. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, oh, hmm. Man. I just don't, I just don't know. I, I get, the older I get, the more I go, like, I, I feel very flummoxed. I still like listening to my New York Times, the daily podcast yes. every morning. And then I'm like, but wait a second. Yeah, I think my my bigger thing with with like as I get older, I'm like we need. To, my theory is we should stop teaching a broad, uh, niceified overview of history. Period. Yeah, I don't think you should teach uh, 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 America's founding until you're ready to talk about the deaths that were involved. Better to learn about like something very specific. And understand the intricacies of it, then then have you have to educate your kids. Oh, by the way, the Thanksgiving meal wasn't this fun. It wasn't this yeah. cartoon. <laughs> yeah. I and I think I I my moment of really starting to doubt like newspapers was. I did a I was part of a theater company, and the head theater critic 
of the New York Times talked about this theater and they said it's oh it's a it's a small indie theater but a lot of casting agents frequently come to the shows and I thought <laughs> casting <laughs> agents yeah. no one's that doesn't the add term up casting agents yeah no one uses the term casting agent and yeah. I was like if the head theater critic gets that detail wrong yeah what is the person covering the news I, in I, Palestine. I do, I do feel like there's like moments where you have realizations of like the current thing right now, where you can see the difference of headlines and how they phrase things. How with some people it's phrased in one light, and other people it's phrased in a different light. And you're like, oh, this is happening in this one scenario. It surely is happening in a lot of other scenarios. That I, just, I I love I how never... John Marco's entire understanding of the world is through the lens of theater. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, so the JFK assassination, right? <laughs> There were a bunch of stage moms who tried to put on the Bay of Pigs invasion, and they forced <laughs> President Kennedy, the star of the play, to go along with it. And he wanted to pull his troops out of Vietnam yeah. and scatter the CIA to the wind. And then the, the stage moms behind the stage who were pulling the levers, they dropped a sandbag on him. But they blamed it yeah. on the quiet kid who was the, you know, the stagehand. Who was the hand. principal's was nephew, it? and yes. that's, that's yeah. where things Yes, got. Yeah. But what was the principal's nephew doing in Mexico r- months before the sh- You know, why was he in Soviet Russia... Yeah. It wasn't a production of Once on This Island. Oh, it was you know, not. conspiracy theories are fun too. It's the <laughs> other thing. They're fun. Yes. They're fun. In the right Even doses. In the right doses, yes. No, I mean and Sandy Hook's not fun. That one yeah, is that one's awful. Very not uh, fun. That one's not fun. But like ones where like there's not like it's either older or like there's not really like a, you know old people who had it coming. Well, like JFK, <laughs> we're far enough removed from it where we can have yeah. a little fun with it. You know? Yeah. Like, um uh but I, I yeah. Um because you're cause Part of you is like, ooh, wouldn't that be crazy if we found out something new, you know? Yeah. I I, I need one of them to come true hard. You, you, need, a, you need Tupac you wanna, to show I need, up. You want, 9/11, you want to find out George Bush did 9-11 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in your lifetime. Deathbed like, confession. Yeah. <laughs> no, I You're think, right, I did I do think the one that I would love to have. I brought this nation together, didn't I? <laughs> 85% approval rating. I would love if a bed... Of Donald Trump sitting on a chair in front of a Russian sex worker peeing on a bed. Oh yeah, the pee tape being real. If that came out, I go, all right, okay, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Who also, knows? it wouldn't hurt his campaign chances at all. Not, no, not at, at all. all. If anything, they're obsessed up, with my tape. Some freaky liberals. <laughs> <laughs> they're jerking their little puds to my tape, my beautiful tape. <laughs> you think it would get a bunch of a bunch, just kink, kinky some kinks, liberals some being like, liberals. you know what? You'd be what? selling T-shirts with okay. a screenshot of like the golden moment. Yeah, on his on the campaign. Uh, there was like that one weekend where everyone was really into that, and we all thought that it might be true. P tape week. Yeah, one of the great Twitter weeks. You know, one one of the biggest uh, to, to keep talking, but when 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 the uh, Access Hollywood, first of all, with with the generative AI, I do think the sad thing is it will get rid of all. If AI existed as it did now, and that Access Hollywood tape came out, mm-hmm. anyone could legitimately say that's fake. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that gets rid of like, that gets rid of a lot of smoking gun moments. True. I mean, we're really gonna lose them. Even and as it gets a little bit better, video too. Like right now, you can kind of tell when a video is AI generated, but uh, how long until you can't? Yeah. You know. I said my theory is like, especially like you know, deep fake porn. Like the good news is we can we can all just start filming ourselves fucking again yeah and if it leaks throw like, on a oh couple God, other 60, inches 60, 60 yeah. videos of me masturbating in my bedroom who who did that <laughs> yeah why would they do that's such what a you thing? need if you want film of that <laughs> finally i can start filming myself jerking off again yeah <laughs> i i don't know i just always see stuff like people talking about like deep fake or there's some streamer who got i mean like he shared his screen and he had a deep fake porn tab open of another streamer and it was like a scandal and and whatnot, and he apologized. It was, but I'm like I'm like oh deep fake porn, you I don't know how you stop that period. Yeah. To me, that's like that's a battle. Most porn battles are lost pretty fast. <laughs> porn. Yeah, I've been porn. struggling with the editing myself, but no, I see. Yeah, the, you want to. I, stop I just it. like yeah. I just don't know how you stop if you create a program where you could put. Because I know there's some guys out there that are going to put my face on something. <laughs> and I just don't know how I could yeah. possibly keep track of the And thousands. like, er, It's yeah. got to be like at, everyone at a, cer- at a certain level of fame has deep fakes made of them. Oh, yeah. Already. Oh, They're yeah. already circulating. Yeah. How do you explain that? Like some relative sees that or something. It's got to be. 
It's Nuts. The, but it, it'll, it'll, it's the same way with like uh, cartoon porn, where like you'll see an image of Homer fucking uh, family guy. What's Family Guy's wife? What's her name? Lois. Lois. Come on, Lois. <laughs> it feels like different species. But like at some point, you'd be like, okay, you're like, oh, there's Russell and Jamarco, deep fake of them fucking, and they're like, ah, it's not real. Yeah, it's got to be real. If it's not real, who cares? Yeah. You scared about AI? Scared that it's gonna like. Uh Hmm. Change the fabric that, of society. Yeah, no, AI, AI definitely worries me. It ain't great. It ain't great for comedy. It's not good for society. I don't think. i you know, there's an argument to be made. Like there are a lot of effective uses for it. I don't know what they are, but they uh, like media content. If they start making stuff out, if they start making AI generated content of whole cloth, it's over. Like what the fuck? Like yeah, but but however. Part of media consumption is everyone's watching the same thing. So if you can make yeah. an infinite number of episodes of The Office, what's the point unless someone is, I guess, you know, networks could then be curating AI generations. But again, I think it's not fun if the people aren't real. Yeah, I think everyone was worried about when the Michael Jackson hologram went out there, but no one talks about it anymore So, because who gives a shit? I think that for sure. I, I don't want to watch anything that's AI generated. I want to no. watch stuff that's made by people, yeah. and especially live performance too. It's like a hundred times better. Yeah. But like, yeah. I think there's going to be a huge market if they do decide to make like, you know, Avengers, uh, fuck the Guardians, uh, twelve, and they do it all made out of AI. It, is that going to gross a billion dollars? Probably. No, because because your computer program can make a thousand different versions of that movie. So who's going to have the rights to that? That's true. Yeah, and then you get the curated version. Like, Thor is smashing the head of your high school bully. Oh, God. Like, it's completely tailored to you. Yeah, we're approaching, it's not an original thought at all, but we're approaching the Wally universe where we're all just kind of sitting in chairs, being entertained and fed at all hours of the day. Well, I hope everyone's enjoying watching this podcast, eating at home. <laughs> yeah. We're very, <laughs> yes. we're very. No, good. you guys are cool. <laughs> you guys are the cool ones. You're the smart ones. <laughs> I, uh, 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 you're six foot seven. I try. Wait, the JFL New Faces. Yeah. Was that the famous one? The infamous one? Because Jeffrey Asmus. <laughs> yes. Remember Asmus? It's, it's the one that was really bad. Where it was at? It was at a different venue that was far away and it was during Roast Battle Finals. Oh. And who was the host? Yeah. The host was the great George Wallace. We love George Wallace. He had just love basically him. loved George. He's a good friend. He had basically just retired from comedy, and uh, he didn't give a fuck. And like he shouldn't. He's George Wallace. He's he had done retired. it. He had just ended his Vegas residency, if I recall oh. correctly. And it's like, okay, you've got. He was talking about his like five they, they houses. They made him host. Uh, uh, I don't think they on rep new faces. Part of me thinks that he. I mean, I don't think he was at a stage of his career where he was doing anything he didn't want to, but. He was just he wasn't out there trying to impress anybody. He yeah, you yeah. know what? He didn't even do that bad of a job. The the report was like, "Oh, he bombed, blah blah blah." He was doing crowd work, but the crowd was like all industry. So, okay, for the listeners who don't know, this is like a showcase for they you know, they pick X amount of new comics, up and coming yeah. comics like in this case it was 11, I think. And it all told it's like 30 every year because there's a couple of regular ones and then there's the unwrapped and they showcase for the industry in Montreal. So, it's this big show with a huge amount of industry presence, you it know, used TV to be like you, you nailed this. You, your career was set. People used to leave with six-figure holding deals. They used to go to the festival and they used to like times. Yeah, they used to get a deal times. and be a rich person after that. Yeah, but um, now you do new faces. They'll bring you back next year. Let you do your podcast for twenty people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it, it I was, and this was like right on the cusp when it was becoming like it ain't what it used to be. Because uh -huh. people had already had Conan sets, they already had other late night sets, mm -hmm. and they were doing new faces, whatever. So George Wallace is out there; he's doing crowd work with the industry, and the industry it's like a jaded audience, and also the room is like two thirds full, something like that, because yeah. of logistical errors that were made, whatever. So it was. I, luckily, I went first, and I got like whatever meat was left there, and it was fine. But like George Wallace, he's up there; he's doing crowd work. He brings me on. He leaves his notes on the stage, on the stool, and I yeah. riff on that. I was like, he left his notes here. Can I just do this material? I'd be thinking, too. And, like, I got a yeah, little... Did it work? Yeah, I got a little That's bit of brave. a laugh, a little, of appla little applause riff to start my, like, little six-minute set. But, like, from then... I mean, people left. It was, like... It's supposed to be one of the biggest shows at the festival. Yeah. And, like, the crowd started small and got smaller 
throughout the show. So like all these people, you know, I feel like I can say this. I'm not telling tales out of school. Yeah, yeah. You know who had a rough time? Janelle James, uh-huh. who is uh-huh. now one of the biggest television stars in the world. Like who cried though? Someone cried. Oh, people cried. I don't. I'm not trying. I'm trying to trying to air him out. But I forget if Asmus aired him out already. <laughs> but but uh, I think it was a whole thing already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there there I, were tears. Were but some people did well. Um, Ismail did well. I feel like I did okay. Did Asmus Ni- do Nico as bad White as that did well? Said? No, that was the funny thing. The there was this one <laughs> review written by some unhinged person who I don't think was even like a, a critic. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. wrote this long piece reviewing all of us, all like eleven of us or whatever. We all get like a paragraph. Jeff Asmus gets three or four large paragraphs getting both barrels just like he was the worst he yeah, was yeah. arrogant everyone hated him and like he did okay i mean it was kind of a rough set and but his character is he's arrogant. a funny guy his, oh, his so stage persona yeah. is arrogant i if i could without hurting people's feelings <laughs> i had this thought once of like i would love to write fully thought out reviews of like uh middle school eighth grade productions of musicals <laughs> just like vicious just like tevya clearly played by a non-jew <laughs> did not bring any of the weight uh, of the jewish struggle to this role it took like, some liberties with the second like, act that were not true like to the source getting, material getting you going to watch a middle school production and being like we have a professional comedian and actor he's going to give us notes i don't like their <laughs> dress rehearsal and then just like just to them, one on one, like uh, to the to the whole cast, ripping them apart. Stanley yeah, yeah, yeah. Kowalski was and ten really, pounds overweight. Really committing to it. <laughs> oh man, I, I've I've had it as a bit. I had it as a sketch. I I have this fantasy of, I get hired to go to a a college, a, a musical theater majors, and I like do an hour performance or lecture where I get them all to quit by the end. <laughs> I think that you would be walk fun. the room. And and I, I I on stage I joke about like let me hire you to talk your kid out of it, but I'm like you know what? You think you could really do it? I think I could really really make a impassioned plea for them to consider not majoring in it in college. The problem is I would also encourage them to not go to college if they actually wanted to pursue it. Right. But for the right money, I'll say anything. I'll say get into physics. But I think. I could do that. I think I could really talk through all the ways that their lives are going to be miserable. But I'd have to be mean. Yeah. You could do that. I'm not mean in real life. No, you're not. Just in the you wouldn't be to kids. I've said this before. John Marco is a surprisingly good hang. Yeah. He is That's fine. That's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> he's, you wouldn't think it, yeah. but he's fine. <laughs> I still say that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this, this Netflix, is, there's, there's, some, there's a harsh Alec Baldwin joke. And I'm I'm very curious to see. Oh, in, in your in new Netflix that's set that's coming, coming out, out that yeah. w- is out now. You Would take you, his side. I take his take side. His You're side. pro Baldwin. I said he could have killed more people on that set. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny how. Listen, well, you know she wasn't laid back from craft services. I, I, t- I texted John Marco. I was like, I was like SNL recently. Like they 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 tested out like the Baldwin waters yeah. again put they just the put him in a put him in a late night late like later in the the show sketch at the very end yeah, brought him out see if everyone little cameo came out <laughs> like it was just very funny it felt so like we'll just test the waters a little bit we won't put him in the god no we won't put him in the opening like, yeah, like yeah, we'll yeah. just you know throw him in let's just test the water see if he's it's cool we'll throw with all cold open trump let's go <laughs> it. you're out james austin yeah, johnson yeah, yeah. with the real trump is back <laughs> That is funny. I wonder when he'll host again. It'll happen. I, I think it would be, I think, uh, we're talking years, I think, still. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, you know, they, it was very funny. It felt it, very, like... It all depends. Oh, it all depends how that movie does. That Are they releasing that movie? Out? That's the whole joke I say in the fucking Netflix. Holy shit. I say, oh how can God. you give that movie a positive review? Baldwin never misses. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we'll, uh, but I think it depends. Like, if it's a, I can't believe it's still coming out. I don't think the movie's going to do anything. It's not going to make money, and it's not going to get good reviews. But I, but I if it's so good that the reviews say... Isn't there, like, legal stuff still happening with the thing? I feel like that matters more. Isn't there, like, isn't he, like... Sure. It seems like, and again, I don't trust any news source anymore. And who knows? All could be actors. There were a lot mm-hmm. on set. <laughs> but uh, 
no, it just it does seem like it was like I I do think it's very uh, so disingenuous and awful when some Republicans go like blame Baldwin in a way where I'm sure he was just handed a it seems like he was handed a prop gun yeah and had no reason yeah. to think that it would be a real gun yeah, yeah like it doesn't it compute horrifying. to them that the presence of a real gun and live ammo in the environment was what precipitated a terrible thing happening yeah, like yeah they can't yeah. put yeah. two and two together there it's like maybe it wouldn't have happened if you know there was a, a there was a equipment difference there sure yeah you can you do an Alec Baldwin no I just kind of whisper like this lemon Lemon, I'm going to shoot that PA if he looks at me one more time. Jesus Christ. He made eye contact with me, bringing me my tea. I'm going to put him in the ground. What are your best? Uh, let me, can I pimp you out for a second? <laughs> can I see your chest neck? That, that was the one that started it all, I think. It's a little bit. It's hard not to do walking when you do yeah, Jessel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're close, very, though. Very I'm realizing, yeah. But yes, uh, Mike, if you weren't. If you, pay, if you spent half as much time reading books as you do chasing skanks. You probably wouldn't have AIDS. <laughs> uh, did you get any Alec Baldwin jokes in for that roast? I did. What, yeah, what was that your was, joke? That was, I, God, I just remember that. Yeah, we're, I contributed a couple contributed of things. You for the Alec Baldwin roast. Oh. Just a little bit. Of what did I say? There was one. Um, did you, I, first, I, you did that, Liz. I'm going to shoot this PA if they bother. <laughs> yeah, and I submit like, that in. This? I put that in every packet I do. <laughs> <laughs> just, to see, just run it up the flagpole, see if it flies. I got something about Blake Griffin. I was helping out Nikki Glazer. She wrote like 95% of her own jokes, whatever. But like, uh, I think I got one when or two. When you write on. jokes for her, does, does is that in the contract that you have to say that before talking about it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a stipulation. <laughs> Check, get uh, it on tape. I was worried. I don't know how people like. <laughs> she, we talked about it on her podcast, and she was like going on and on about how I wrote for her. So I was like, I, I yeah, think yeah, we're yeah. in the clear. Like I didn't know. I, I always wanted to be honest about like that five, six, seven, eight, where I yeah. asked JPS, like, can I do this joke? And people do that with roast stuff sometimes. Yeah. But I can also see the world where someone goes like, you know, Jamarco doesn't write his own jokes. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. We we live in a weird world where. I remember seeing award shows and thinking they wrote every monologue joke. Right. You know, and part of that, like, people care about that facade. Oh, people are busy. Like, there are big, yeah. successful comedians who need people like me who don't have enough going on to, like, yeah. show, like give them a page of jokes that they can work and with. And roast battles, sometimes many someone times. just gets to your fucking essence, and you go, like, <laughs> well, you saw something. Yeah. Let me pretend I saw that in me. Um, let's yeah. go to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll start. I got it. This has got to stop. Great. My uh, my Alexa, I hate it, man. And Alexas fucking suck. It feels like they made them and they just stopped working on them and then started to try getting money out of you for everything. I, in the morning, will say, what's the weather? That's the biggest thing I ask my Alexa. I say, play sex music and what's the weather? <laughs> and uh, It doesn't respond with a compliment of my comedy, and I'm furious. And every, every time, the first time of the day, it goes... Good morning, Gian Marco. The weather is, and I go, I don't need a robot to say good morning to me. I don't need that extra two seconds. I don't need any formalities or niceties from a machine. You say all that every morning. I don't want it to engage me as like a human. You're not a human. I, I, and you're not good enough to play that game. And AI is going to do that shit all the time. Good morning, because they want you to become emotionally dependent. And I say, stop. You don't wish me a good morning. You are – imagine if every time you open the fridge, before you could open the door, it said, hungry, Russell? And then you <laughs> opened. That would be annoying. So how do they know? <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, look at you. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Are you going to make one of the favorite recipes oh. that your mother, Regina, would make for you when you were seven? She would cut the crusts off, wouldn't she? I mean, <laughs> it, it is interesting. They, they – yeah, I, they – also, then I don't feel like they get the weather right all the time. Yeah. Or like they, 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 you sometimes, I feel like, listen, I've seen other people interact with their Alexas. I think mine is particularly bad. No offense to her, but I, I, I stopped using her because it just, it would be so many questions back and forth. It would never be what I'm asking about. Yeah. It would be a lot of suggestions. And, and you're like, no, I don't want that suggest. Like, I yeah. feel like I have a particularly bad one. Um, and I don't know what is different about it. Tova gets mad. To I say, I say, because we both yell at it. But I say, Tova yells at it in a way where it's as if the Alexa could understand her oh, frustration. Yeah. Her tone. Yeah. I yell because <laughs> I'm mad, and I need to express it. Tova yells in a way of like, 
I'm going to let the Alexa know that like See, you need to listen this time. We're really nice to the Alexa, but we don't we'll like we'll like if we ask and she doesn't know, we'll like quiet tones like <laughs> like we'll like <laughs> she's we'll trying. Like, we'll be like we'll be like oh, just like like we cuz uh, we kind of have a policy where we we can't yell at her. Uh, I just feel. Did you have to enact that policy? You were getting a little too. No, I just think that I, 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 for whatever reason, I don't like when people yell at the the ro- the AI or the robots. I, because I, I don't, I just, you know, I Roomba, I'm fucking walking. I'd rather Jesus not Christ. use them than than yell sure. at them. Does that make sense? I guess I think AI is gonna fuck you up. You have such a respect for an Alexa, the lowest form of. Well, I'm. I don't want to use it. Like I'm saying, like sure. I don't want. I'm. I've already drawn the line, being like we are. We've. It's. We're, and we're past it. We can't. Yeah. But I don't want to use it because I'm like it's gonna be bad. We're gonna be friends with them. People are gonna marry them. Yeah, this is Roko's Basilisk yeah. taking place. <laughs> you're you're familiar? Yeah. The the thought experiment? No, I don't know that one. There, there's there's a thought experiment in Rocco's Basilisk where if you could imagine that an AI will one day exist that will become so powerful that it will punish all of the people who didn't aid in its construction, yes. would you then support it or would you not? Would you like try to ignore it? And there's like this whole school of thought that like it's already happening where the simulation reality theory where like this machine already exists and like you will be destroyed if you don't help out things like Alexa. I leave a tip for Alexa. But you like so th- so Russ is taking the side of like I'm going to help the machines. I'm going to be nice to them and they'll be nice to me one day. John Marco and I are going down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like that and also I like that John Marco's thought is like yeah, this is part of the softening process that will one day end in all human beings being killed by Boston Dynamics robots and then Russ is like yeah, they get the weather wrong too <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you have this got to stop? Um, yeah, this got to stop. I the last two nights, and this never happens to me. The last two nights, I've had that classic dream for different shows where I don't know my lines, mm. and I don't know where this is coming from. Um, but it's it, I've woken up really not feeling rested, not feeling good about things. And I've just never had those, as an actor, I've been an actor forever. And for whatever reason, the last two nights, it was two different shows. Um, not even the shows I'm doing. Yeah. But I had that, that like, and it felt like it was hours of my life being stuck on a stage, not knowing what the lines are and, 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 and no one helping me out and the deep panic and anxiety and stress of that. And it felt like it was like these long, long performances and I'd get off and I'd be like, I don't know. And I'm looking at the pages and then I go back on and I just didn't know. And I don't know where this is coming from, but it happened the last two nights and, um, I'm fucking sick of it. Well, Gutenberg, you probably need a new understudy because this one is cracking under the <laughs> pressure. It wasn't even Gutenberg. That's the weird thing. Well, I was the one. Hours sh- was one of your Blue sketches. Man Group. The one show was um the one show was like uh like uh, something from middle school or high school, and then the other show was um Titanic. I was suddenly in Titanic, and I went out in that dumb bird thing, and I didn't know any of the words, <laughs> didn't know any of the moves, didn't know any of it. Stressful. And you know what? Like what's crazy about dreams is you feel like it's real. Like you feel yeah like I'm there, and it, it was so, it, I was like so frustrated because i was like how do i not know already it's yeah. only been not that long anyways um jp you got this guy stop sorry I got, i'm leaving in uh, five. Oh, minutes. oh are you this yeah. has got to stop uh whistling and drumming along to music if you don't have rhythm that is the caveat if you are whistling uh, along to a song or you're whistling a tune you better have perfect fucking pitch if you're drumming along to a tune you better have metronomic tempo because I'm tired of it. You're just being a toddler. You're being a noisemaker, yeah. banging on something. I hold my fellow man to a high musical standard yeah. when I'm surrounded by these can people. you whistle? You got to go whistle? A little bit. You know, I can carry a tune. That's That was pitch perfect right there. <laughs> Not great. I can only do it in one key. It's really stuck there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry if this gets you an RIAA strike against your <laughs> podcast for being too uh, similar to the melodies. Final segment. You better count your blessings. You better count your blessings. Do us a favor. Let's do a blessing and then the plug on top of that. Mm. Russell, do you got a, a blessing? Remember, yeah, this is coming out 
December. Real quick, real quick blessing. I did a gig 19. a while back, and uh, um, people were dragging their feet with paying me for it, mm. and uh, and um, and the payment has with with some fighting and some 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 prodding uh um and so thankful for my reps um oh, we got that money and so hey. thankful for that uh a couple of kneecaps thank broken Tova, thank you kent uh and and you know we won we won we won yeah, yeah. we did it joe I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was that was Trump, that was Trump, Trump doing, doing Kamala. 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 Congratulating Biden. <laughs> yes. If he only he did, did that, it, it would bring the whole country <laughs> together. Uh, uh, for me, my blessing. You know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll say uh, I had some reps. I had a, a situation with something with uh, representing a social media arm that was taking some money, didn't get the money, and I finally got the money, and it was mine. Yeah. So, uh, power shout to out people. to all my rep power. Yeah, yeah. we get money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 my, my, say your plug. Uh, uh, just follow me on Instagram at Russell J. Daniels. Uh, uh, for me, uh, I will be the silver lining. My new material show is December 27th, and then I will be at Punchline Philly December 28th, 29th, and 30th. Even if the Netflix does well, those shows have tickets available. I promise it's huge. And let me just say, if you're a fan of the podcast, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. We are actually, uh, we do one bonus episode a month, and we're starting to record it even closer to the date so Russell and I can talk about what's going on, Israel, Palestine, in the moment. <laughs> uh, uh, and also, we are we are working on getting a producer here. We are going to hopefully early next year be working to uh, record and release the next day so we can just talk more about what's going on. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. JP, give us a blessing and your plugs. Well, since you guys talked about getting money uh, via your your representatives in showbiz, I'll keep the theme going. I'm th- uh, count your blessings. I'm, I'm thankful for crossword puzzles. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was the one I thought. But for real though, crossword puzzles fucking rock. They're yeah, everywhere people they get a bad rap is like a thing that you do when you're really bored. I wish I was doing a crossword puzzle right now. I love them. I love crosswords. I just often go like, oh, I'm too dumb. I get stuck. Mm. There was some variation on a crossword puzzle that was when I was in London that was like their thing. And I was like, oh, I can figure this one out. Mm. I would love to have that experience too. But I like them for the me solving them part. But no, I, uh, do, you, do you do the New York <laughs> Times like some day? You, you know what's got a great one? New York Magazine, phenomenal. New Yorker, a little more pretentious, but also good. Uh-huh. And then, just, I mean, what is, is work each category on your brain. a different pronoun? <laughs> It's all just two, it's all, three, four. It's all the 47 different genders. Did you see the trailer for the new, there's a new Daily Wire uh, movie, feature movie featuring. Uh, Buddy, I read for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy did some jokes where it's like, yeah. it's like I punched the whole it up. joke is these guys are bad at sports, so they make a team. They all identify as transgender, and then they play in the women's Olympic basketball, whatever, whatever, whatever. I love it. And uh, so true. It's just <laughs> so true. I thought about we should watch it and review it like for th- for the Patreon. Oh God. When Jeffrey Asmus did. They reviewed Matt Reif special for the Patreon. And it's one of those things though where it's like, I I will want to listen to that. I don't know if the average human being. We had we had fun watching a, spe- a bad special one time together, or we didn't have fun. Uh, Douglas, oh, why you gotta bleep everything? <laughs> please, 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 Douglas? please. No one liked Douglas. Uh, bleep no every proper Douglas. noun in this. No episode. one liked Douglas. No one liked Douglas. Uh, imagine <laughs> the, the earlier one about assault being funnier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was though. It was much better. Uh, that would be fun. Maybe we will watch yeah. that. Uh, it looks it looks awful, and uh, <laughs> uh, even conservatives will realize that even though they hate liberals, they love their art. Uh, what do you want to plug? I want to plug. Uh, this comes out the two days after I just recorded my special, my debut comedy special. Uh, be on the lookout for that. It's going to come out in 2024. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get some a little subscriber base going. I'm also on Instagram at McDade Baby. Follow me. Subscribe. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos. I got a little documentary road series that's going to be coming out soon. Oh, hell yeah! Hell so yeah. be on the lookout for Follow that. Oh, JP. But JP's a tremendous comedian. He 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 blends the the tight uh, joke structure of, of Anthony Jeselnik, but with kind of alt perspectives that are so surprising and crazy. <laughs> tell tell your tell your uh, 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 rich people bragging joke. Oh Did man! I fuck it up already? No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, I'll walk around New York sometimes, and uh, I'll, 
I'll see people from time to time. We're like, I'm get it. I get it. You have money. Stop shaking your cup full of coins at me. <laughs> this is the downside. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to The Downside, the Downside. with John Marco Cerezi. Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to The Downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They could subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Patreon.com. Patreon. 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 Patreon